Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Adri Raven. Thanks for your support, Adri. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Well, since we're officially between chapters at this point, it seemed like a good time to uh, put out a few more mini-episodes. These are basically episodes where we focus on getting to know our companions a little better. Full disclosure, I did record this footage quite some time ago. I just didn't get around to finishing it until now. That said, let's get to know Valerie. Greetings, Valerie sighs. Everything is well, I hope. I'm ready for new orders. Valerie, tell me about yourself. What exactly would you like to know? I was born to a noble family, though I didn't remain long on the family estate. My father sent me to the Order of the Eternal Rose, but I left once I realized it didn't match my principles. Where are you from? What was your childhood like? I was born in Bravoy, but in fact I've never seen much of the country. I spent my childhood on a remote estate, owned by my noble family. My father is a respectable philanthropist and benefactor of the Church of Shailen. He's also a renowned private collector and a great admirer of the arts. My mother saw to my education personally. From my early years I learned good manners how to behave at the dinner table, and the proper form of words for every occasion. I also learned the difference between true nobles and low-born upstarts, and I learned how to treat each of them properly. Our home was always under the protection of several paladins of Shailen. My father has donated a handsome sum to their order. One of them, a man of venerable age with a grey beard, once let me touch his shining armor. I still remember the admiration I felt when I touched the cold, polished steel. Valerie smiles. Of all the memories of my childhood, that one is somehow the warmest one. Why were you sent to the Paladin Order of the Eternal Rose? Ah, as you can imagine, from my first days I was surrounded by crowds of servants and nannies who never stopped praising my heavenly beauty. The paladins of Shailen, who used to visit our house, echoed these praises. In the end, general consensus overwhelmed my father's better judgment. When I turned six, I was brought to the church of Shailen and told that this would be my new home. Don't pity me, though, I beg of you. Many who hear this story immediately assume that my parents were cruel and had no love for their child. Valerie's eyes become stern. My parents had respect for me. They taught me something that has supported me all my life. A sense of self-esteem. Besides, they didn't abandon me. Once every six months, they would come and visit me at the Order of the Eternal Rose. We had some tea and then had an hour to walk around the garden. Then they would take their leave, as etiquette demanded. What did they teach you in the Order? A variety of things. Some of them appealed to me, others I simply couldn't accept. I enjoyed the physical activities and swordsmanship, but the arts, calligraphy, painting, poetry, and so many other ways to waste one's time. Valerie sighs. I guess that deep in my heart I always knew I'd never be a true paladin of Shailen. Wielding a sword always felt more natural to me than handling a paintbrush. Why did you leave the Order? Because of my heavenly beauty, Valerie winces in contempt. According to Shailen's laws, all art is sacred, whatever form it takes. Severe punishment awaits those who dare harm a painting, sculpture, or poem, no matter how worthless the drivel might be. My looks always attracted unwanted attention from the pilgrims and macolites at the temple. I received my first poem, dedicated to me, when I was nine. The author was some wealthy geezer. 
Valerie's lips thin in contempt. And that was only the beginning. Sculptures, pictures, poems, I was drowning in them. My admirers mobbed me, and I had to respectfully accept all their garbage. The clerics of the temple were magnanimous, for my suitors made generous offerings to the church. But once, one time I just snapped. Barely suppressed anger glitters across Valerie's eyes. Some wealthy idiot had dedicated an extremely untalented poem to me, and he had the nerve to read it right to my face, holding my sleeve. The hour was late, and I was on my way to get some rest after a boring lesson on rhymes. I lost control and tore the poem apart right in front of him. Valerie raises her head proudly. The paladins wanted to impose some punishment upon me. I don't remember which one exactly. They wanted me to repent. Instead, I just gathered my things and left. What did you do after you left the order? I set off for Restov. Valerie shrugs. I wanted to get as far away as possible from Shaylin and the destiny everyone seemed so ready to force upon me. Besides, the school of swordsmanship in Restov has quite a decent reputation. Honestly, I was hoping for an opportunity to learn from the famous Aldori masters. Eventually, it became clear that their technique wasn't a good fit for me. They teach to avoid impact, whereas I prefer to raise my shield. But my abilities and skills, which I'd learned at the Order of the Eternal Rose, were enough to make the Sword Lords take an interest in me. They offered me a chance to join the mercenaries who served the Sword Lords, and I accepted. I'm not sure about this one, but I bet your beauty inspired many people in the Order. Valerie's gaze suddenly becomes cold, and here I'd hope to avoid the question. She exhales loudly. Well, let's get this over with, once and for all. You should understand that I am perfectly aware that most races, orders, and genders find me physically attractive. It's beyond my power to change that, but I've never given a potential admirer any reason to start a conversation with me. But it doesn't stop them. After leaving the order, I took a dagger and cut off the long hair they used to praise. Well, now I get letters praising the beauty of my eyes. It was because of my appearance that I ended up in the Order of the Eternal Rose, though I never wanted to be a paladin. It was because of my beauty that an infinite number of suitors have pursued me, all of them confusing simple politeness with hints of affection. Valerie clenches her fist. But do you know what I really want? I want people to stop treating me like a piece of art. I want them to notice that I'm a person, that I'm capable of something more than smiling for paintings, where I sit wearing a lacy satin dress, holding a basket of peaches in my lap. Is that too much to ask? The last question comes out in a shout, though Valerie doesn't seem to realize it. Yikes. Uh, thank you for your honesty. I understand you very well. You're a true friend who I can trust with my life. I am truly happy that you understand me. Thank you. Valerie smiles at you gratefully, and the smile is full of a warmth that you never expected from someone as stern as Valerie. You suddenly realize that you're smiling back at her. Let's change the subject. You have my attention. Valerie bows politely. Tell me about the way of Shaylin and about her paladins. Shaylin is a goddess of love, beauty, and art. Her paladins are something like armored artists. That's how they like to think of themselves, at least. Valerie tries to contain her feelings, but her inner contempt bursts forth. They are fanatical defenders of worthless, inartistic paintings and meaningless opuses, if you care to know my opinion. You speak of Shaylin with such contempt. What did the goddess of beauty do to earn your anger? She's been trying to ruin my life, Valerie snorts. Shaylin, the goddess of everything useless that ever existed in this life. All the beauty in the world, 
all the art, all the soulful sighs in the moonlight. They'll never feed a single family. And I beg you to restrain yourself from offering your own opinion. Trust me, I've heard everything you can tell me, more than once. Nothing and nobody can change my mind. Valerie looks at you with suspicion. As for Shaylin, she's the goddess of idlers. I almost joined her preposterous entourage. I'm just glad I was smart enough to denounce her while I still could. Um, uh, what do paladins of Shaylin usually do? They wander around, seeking the next pile of garbage. And when they find it, they call it an immortal piece of art and admire it until they're blue in the face. You might not believe this, but the paladins of Shaylin aren't allowed to slay their enemy if they beg for mercy. Can you guess why? Because a bandit, rapist, or murderer who has been put to the sword will never be able to create something beautiful in the future. So a paladin overpowers her enemy in battle, then inspires him to create a masterpiece. Valerie's face reflects extreme disgust. It might sound hilarious if it weren't true. Plus, all of Shaylin's followers are obliged to practice some sort of art in his or her free time. Every single day, no matter what else is going on, even if you're feeling sick or hungry or sleepy. Otherwise, according to their clerics, you lose your connection with your goddess. A preposterous notion, wouldn't you agree? I understand that not every piece of art is good, or even decent, but surely there must be at least a few great works among them. Is that what you think? Valerie curves an eyebrow, mocking amazement. Many share that delusion. I was deluded too, for a while. Now I consider all works of art useless. People create this garbage because they have nothing better to do. The peasant doesn't paint a picture, he plows the earth to feed his family. The soldier has no time for sculpture, he must defend his homeland. But idlers and slackers have plenty of time to waste. So they smear canvases with paint and imagine they've done something worthy and valuable. Valerie shakes her head in disapproval. You said that every paladin must practice some kind of art. What kind of art did you pursue? Ah, that. I used to embroider, and I still do from time to time. A treacherous blush covers Valerie's cheeks. It's nothing, I assure you. Just a simple task to keep my hands busy and keep the gloomy thoughts at bay. Nothing special. I say, let's talk about something else. I couldn't agree more. If I can be frank, all this talk about Shaylin makes me want to spit. But my noble upbringing prevents me from performing such an undignified act. So, you're an atheist. You don't worship any deity. Right. I need no guidance from above. I have my own good conscience and my leader's orders to live by. Hmm. A lot of these remaining options seem like they... might provoke her, but... You know, you don't have to follow etiquette and maintain good manners while speaking with me, if you don't want to. I am aware of that, Valerie sighs. But I'm sure you understand that I am what I am. That's how I was brought up, first by my parents and then by my mentors in the Order. Besides, I was born to a noble family. Valerie raises her chin proudly. So I rather enjoy the idea that my manner of speech differs a bit from the common language of the peasantry. You just can't imagine how many social climbers have bowed politely the moment I opened my mouth. I guess you have plenty of suitors. Valerie rolls her eyes. Sadly, you're right to suppose that. Even here in these remote lands, one can find offspring of many noble houses, and all of them consider it their duty to kneel before me, begging me to walk with them in the garden. Valerie's voice overflows with contempt. If words were poison, you'd be dying a horrible death. Oh, and don't forget about the village oafs. 
They understand the concept of nobility perfectly well, so they realize they'll be punished if they dare make any advance towards me. So they prefer to stare from a distance, drooling. And believe me, I can very well imagine what they discuss in the taverns. Valerie shivers and jerks her shoulders, as if trying to shed the sticky, disgusting stares. You're so eager to follow my orders. Why? What do you mean, why? Valerie looks at you in bewilderment. I follow your orders. I've joined your campaign because I have faith in you. I believe your intentions to be noble, though things may not always turn out as you've planned. You are my commander. Your orders are law. It's my duty to follow them. Valerie hesitates for a moment. Well, so long as you don't order me to do something that's absolutely dishonorable. But that would never happen. I hope. And that's it. Thank you for the conversation. I'll talk to you later. As you wish. Valerie nods with dignity. I've got to say, Valerie's got more depth than I was expecting. She's, uh... Got a lot of pent-up anger and resentment. Though uh, it's at least partially justified, given the life that was forced upon her. Still, she's definitely got some issues that she is going to need to work out, eventually. I'm sure we'll see more of that coming up in the future. After all, just because she's done with Shaylin doesn't mean that Shaylin is done with her. At any rate, we'll pick up next time with a proper episode, but I do want to get to the rest of the companions eventually. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, the Fan Run Wiki, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. Links are in the description.